Hey everybody, it's Onyi, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this antler flower crown headband. That's kind of a mouthful, but what you're going to need is yarn. I just used worsted weight. I used a 3.125 millimeter hook, a yarn needle, and you're also going to need a headband. So first things first, we're going to do the horn. Take your yarn. Take your yarn and leave a long tail. And then we're going to do a slip knot. And now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Now you're going to skip that um, stitch and go into the next one. And do single crochets all the way down. There you go, and then um, chain one. And now we're gonna start increasing. If you don't know how to increase, this is how I do mine. I go into the first single crochet right there. And then in our second stitch, we're going to do our increase and we're going to do two single crochets. That's one single crochet. That's two. And then we're going to do um, single crochets all the way down. We only have one more for this reel, so that's pretty convenient. Sorry for the struggling. It's a little hard to crochet at this angle. And this yarn does not like me at all. And then we're going to chain one. And we're going to keep doing that same thing until the 16th row. So, um, for a single crochet, you're going to, um, for a stitch, you're going to do a single crochet as normal. Second stitch will be our two single crochets. One, two, and then we're going to single crochet normally for the rest of the row. Chain one. This is the last one I'll show you. Normal. And then our increase. Oh, I can't see the stitches. One. Two. And then single crochet. And there you go. So I'll see you at row 16 and you're gonna keep increasing every row. And we're back. Um, I have done 16 rows. Well, let's count it. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Mm, that's one row. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Yep, we're good. If you mess up and do 17 or 18 rows, not a problem. Just make sure you do the same amount of rows for each horn so they can be symmetrical. But now we have done our 16 row. We're just going to keep on um, doing our single crochets, but we're not going to be increasing anymore. So you know how you usually go in the second stitch and increase? Yeah, that's a no. We're just going to keep doing regular single crochets till row 22 and I'll meet you at row 22 and we are at row 22 and we are done thank goodness so chain one and then leave a long tail and 
gonna pull that through and set that aside this is going to be our long horn our long horn and we are going to do our short horn to do our short horn it is the exact same exact same technique um, do your slip knot but instead of chaining four we're going to chain three Two, three. It was not a very good chain, but we'll roll with it. And we're going to skip that one and do some crochets all the way down. Chain one. And just like before, um, we will do our increase in the second chain, second stitch. First one, and our second stitch is the last stitch. That's also convenient. Chain one, turn. So we're gonna keep increasing um, till row nine. And I'll see you at row nine. And here we are at row nine. Um, same thing as before. Chain one. I hope I didn't chain one already, but and if I did, that doesn't matter. And now you're ready to sew your horns. So I'm going to show you how to sew the horns together with the long one. Um, darn your needle and um, I use this string while using the top string and threading it through the front. That's very important because we are, that this string right here is what's going to um, give us a bend in our horn instead of having it go straight up. So I know this is, um, a type of stitch somewhere I think in knitting it's called a mattress stitch I don't particularly know what it's called in the crocheting world but you're just going to go I mean just do like this just make sure the um, rows are lined up so my needle's on this side, I'm gonna go back on this side and thread through. I'm gonna go back on that same side and thread through. And then it's gonna to wanna to knot on you, but don't let that happen. We really don't want too much of a, um, a seam, just a very, very slight seam will be okay.
And I know um, a lot of people, when they do crochet horns, they do, um, I'm going to murder the word, but it's called omirigumi, something like that. I'm so sorry for mispronouncing it. And um, those are great. I've seen a couple. They look very lovely. But the thing is, they don't look very realistic to me. And even if they did, it just takes forever to get the dimension you want. Um, I did a, a, I'm going to say it wrong again, an imigurumi. Uh, I did one of those horns before. And um, to do the bend, like I'm going to show you, you have to do, um, like I think, two crochets together, something like that. And I don't know. It just seemed very tiresome especially if the bend doesn't come out how you want it but that's just my two cents I like this way better the seam does not bother me at all as you can see you hardly get a seam if you even want to turn it inside out it's gonna be hard because of the size of this but if you want to turn it inside out and have absolutely no seam then you can totally do that anyway I'll um, catch up with you when I've finished and we're back as I said you will have a little bit of a seam but it's going on the top of your head and people are going to be too um, too busy looking at all the pretty flowers to even notice it but anyway um, I've done I'm done and um, it has started to bend a little bit but I would kind of like a little bit more so take this um, string right here and pull it and then kind of pull that and it's gonna start to bend but you still want a little bit more assurance that it's gonna stay put so what I do is um, I start making a zigzag pattern it's gonna get harder to put your needle through So you see that it's going to start bending when you do that zigzag pattern. You can have it bend all the way like this if you want to. I just want a slight, slight bend like that. This is why I like this method because I have full control of the customization of this horn. If I want to go back tomorrow and give it an even bigger bend, I can do that. But um, just don't give it too much of a bend. That's what's going to make it look like ant um, reindeer antlers, which is not what we're trying to do. I kind of want a cow. Anyway, I think that's good enough. With the short horn, it's the exact same method as well, but I do suggest that you stitch it like this in a slanted position. You know, usually you would do it straight like that. I suggest this way. So when you um, attach it to your horn, it kind of leans back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you can do it like that, but that's just my two cents. Don't forget to stuff your horns as well, just for some extra durability. Now I'm going to show you how to do the flowers. They're my favorite thing. So you're going to do a magic loop or circle or not, whichever, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to chain one to start. And we're going to do five um, single crochets into the magic loop. And now we're going to pull that close. And then we're going to look for the fifth um, single crochet you did. There it is right there. And you're going to put your um, hook inside of it. Okay, once your hook is inside, you're going to take your um, blue colored yarn. 
and you're going to do a color change. And by that, you're just going to do a simple, um, I just now want to go inside. Slip stitch. That's what I meant to say. A simple slip stitch. And then you're going to chain three. And you're going to do a double crochet in that same um, hole. So right in there. And now you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And you're going to go into the next stitch and do a slip stitch. Okay, now you're going to chain three. You're going to go into that same hole and do a double crochet. And now you're going to chain three. And you're just going to repeat everything. Go into the next um, stitch and do a slip stitch. And you should have five petals in all, and I'll see you on the fifth one. And now we're at the last petal. I'm going to chain three. And then um, just do a slip stitch right there. And then we're just going to um, cut all our strings that are still attached to our yarn. And then pull up the blue one. I don't know why this one, that should be, there you go. And then as you guys know, I hate weaving in my ends. If you want to do that, go ahead. But this is my shortcut. I'm going to take each colored um, yarn in my hand and I'm just going to knot them. Okay, and then um, we're going to pick one blue yarn out and we're just going to cut the rest. There you go. To wrap your headband in yarn, do your slip knot, hook, and then um, take your headband, and this is our working yarn, the one I have in my hand, and what you're going to want to do is reach under there. It's going to be very awkward at first. There with me, it gets a whole lot easier. And do a slip stitch and pull everything tight. Like I said, it's very awkward at first because everything wants to slip off, but it gets a lot easier. And this yarn is not my friend.
Okay, once you have a couple down, um, move them a little bit. But yeah, keep going all the way up. Um, a tip to keep the um, yard from sliding off is to use glue, um, fabric glue, hot glue, any glue will work and it just stops it in its tracks. Especially when you're wearing it, you don't want it to start unraveling when you're wearing it because that's all your decoration has to hang on to and it would suck if it all started to spill. So here is the horn. Um, as you can see, I started working on it. Um, you can see how I did the horns. That turned out really good. Um, no, this horn is not longer than that horn. I don't know why it looks like that. It's just the flowers and leaves are covering them up. On the leaves, um, I am not going to show you how to do the leaves because every time I write a pattern on the leaves, they end up looking very different. Like, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong here um, I suggest you go to someone who actually knows how to do leaves and they can show you um, if you want to get the same size I chained eight and I think it was a single crochet single crochet half double crochet double crochet half double crochet single crochet single crochet so um if you want to try it you can be my guest um, I'm not going to show you how to do the roses either um, I don't think they're original that's what I'm Thing. I think I learned it from someone else. I'll try really hard to um, figure out the source, but I don't want to do any kind of copyright infringement. But just um, do any kind of roses you want. For sewing down the roses, I suggest you don't like sew them down flat, like facing completely up. I suggest you kind of have them, you know, kind of tilted like that. This one is still facing up. Um, but that's okay um, for sewing down all your items just girl just I don't even know how I did it just put your needle anywhere that will help use the ridges use these just I mean make it work mine's is horrible as you can see from the back um, there's just no type of pattern going on you can see I pulled a little too tightly right there if you want to use flowers to cover it up, you can. It's the back of my head and my hair kind of covers it, so I really don't care. But yeah, I'll show you how, what it looks like when it's done. And here we are. This is the finished product. It is super cute. I just love how everything turned out. If, um, if the ends of the yarn are falling off, then just dab a little glue on it and that should stop it from happening. But yeah, I, I am just so inspired now to make so many more headbands. This will definitely not be the last one. Thank you so much for crocheting this with me. It was honestly just the funnest thing I've ever done. If you end up making it, please show me on my blog or emailing it to me. That would be great. And this is Oni.